Hello everyone, it's me again. Today I'm back with the topic of building a homemade welding machine. Honestly, these kinds of videos have been trending so fast lately that I barely finish a cup of tea before seeing them pop up everywhere. So I thought, well, it'd be a shame not to try this myself. And here I am, giving it a go, partly out of curiosity and partly to bring you the clearest, most easy to follow look at the whole process. If you're watching this, thank you. Every bit of support from you gives me the push to keep making these slightly risky, but very fun DIY projects. And to get things started, we're working with very familiar items, a spark plug and a simple metal single phase connector. Nothing fancy, just the essentials. This connector will act as the middleman, linking the welding tip to the threaded end of the spark plug. That way, electricity has a stable, direct path and nothing feels loose while you're working. Think of it as fitting in a small puzzle piece. So the whole setup runs smoothly. Just turn it gently until the threads bite together and everything sits tight and ready for the next step. For the next step, prepare an electrical wire, a simple, flexible copper core. Wire works perfectly. First, take either end of the wire and connect it directly to the metal connector we set up earlier. Make sure to twist the copper strands neatly and fasten them firmly so the current has a clean, stable path without jumping around. As for the other end of the wire, just set it aside for now. We'll deal with it later. Taking things one end at a time keeps everything tidy and easier to control, a bit like tying shoelaces. Slow and steady always beats rushing. For electrical safety, we'll use some insulating tape now. Simply wrap a short section of the tape around the part of the wire you just connected, letting it sit neatly against the spark plug's body. This does two things. First, it keeps the wire tidy so it doesn't stick out or get in the way while you work. Second, it seals the connection point, preventing accidental contact or stray sparks. When wrapping, give the tape a gentle stretch so it clings tightly with each layer slightly overlapping the previous one. This helps it stay firm and durable during use. The handle is essential, so I'm using a wooden grip. Drill a straight hole through it, just wide enough for the spark plug's threaded body. Test fit it. If the plug slides in neatly, the handle is perfect. As mentioned earlier, don't take this step lightly. While drilling, Adjust the hole bit by bit until the spark plug's threaded section fits firmly. If the hole ends up a bit wider than intended, don't worry. A small amount of liquid adhesive will fill the gap and help the spark plug sit firmly in the handle. With the other end of the wire, simply attach a crocodile clip. It makes connecting to the power source or contact point much easier.
with the positive side ready. The negative needs its own lead too. One wire, two crocodile clips, one on each end. Simple, tidy, and ready to work. And I'm not sure if anyone has done it this way, but today I'm trying something fun. Turning a simple nail into a welding tip. It's tiny, but with the right touch, it becomes the heart of the whole setup. Stick around. You might be surprised how this little nail transforms into a solid welding tip. The nail tip is now fully finished. Simple, sturdy, and ready to use. All that's left is to attach it to the remaining end of the connector. to power this homemade welder. I'm using a small battery. It's compact, easy to handle, and provides just the right amount of electricity for the setup to run safely and steadily. Clip the leads to the correct terminals, and it's ready for action. When the two terminals touch and create an electric arc, that means the setup is working. But to know how well it performs, we need a real test. So I'm trying on this cup with a broken handle. Just touch the welding tip to the joint and let the arc do its job. We'll see right away how effective it really is. The cup handle is successfully welded, solid and neat. Now, let's move on to the next test to see what else this homemade welder can do. This next test is a bit tougher. That bolt is much denser, so the welding tip will need a little more time to heat and bond properly, but it's worth the effort. Challenges like this are exactly what show how capable our homemade welder really is.
Turns out it didn't take as long as expected. Now, let's take a look at the result. We can conclude that both tests were successful. This small homemade welder may be simple, but it works surprisingly well. Thanks for sticking around and see you in the next round of tinkering.